Hello dear T-Friends from around the world. Welcome to a new tea class with me, Stéphane Erler. I'm the founder of the T-Masters.com tea, tea boutique and also of the T-Masters blog. T-Masters because I'm learning from T-Masters and I want you to become T-Masters. And uh, to do this, we are learning from one of the very top of the first T-Master, Louis. And thanks to this book, uh, a new edition of uh, Louis uh, Charging, the classic of tea, in French. And using the French version, I've translated it uh, using some uh, uh, translation tools also uh, into English. And I'm going to read today's chapter 4 about utensils. And, well, utensils, haven't we covered this topic before? Actually, we did. There was uh, another chapter also called Ut Utensils uh, a, few, uh, a few months ago. But um, these utensils were to make tea in the sense of the tea leaves, to transform the tea leaves. This time, the utensils we are going to talk about, uh, the accessories, are, going, are the ones we are going to use to make the beverage tea. Uh, and um, this uh, utensils are so numerous during the Tang Dynasty that um, I'm going to uh, make this class into two. This chapter is too long for just one reading, so I'm uh, cutting this chapter into two. We'll cover the remaining utensils uh, in, in another month uh, next time. But so let's. Uh, start with the uh, first utensils from this uh, chapter 4. Mm, delicious um, high mountain oolong from Shaninshi. And um, after each utensil, I'm going to give you some of my remarks, uh, some explanations, because it's not always clear. Lu is very brief, uh, usually, so um, these utensils sometimes I, are. Ex uh, described very briefly and you don't know uh, right away what is, uh, they meant for, but don't worry, I'm here to explain all this. So we start with the brazier Feng Lu and the ash tray Hui Chan. The brazier, made of copper or cast iron, is shaped like the tripods of antiquity. Its walls are three tenths of an inch thick the rim measures 9 tenths of an inch and the interior space 6 tenths. It is coated with clay. The three feet are engraved with 21 characters in ancient script. The first foot bears uh, this inscription. Above Kan, water. Below Shun. In the center, Li, fire. On the second foot it's written, May the five elements in our body be balanced and the hundred diseases eliminated. And on the third foot, melted down in the year following the extermination of the barbarians by the holy dynasty. Between the feet there are three windows. Another opening at the bottom is where the air passes through and the ashes fall out. Each window is surmounted by a two-character text in ancient script. Above the first window are the two characters Yi Gong, Duke Yi. Above the second, Kong Lu, Broth Lu. And above the third, Shi Cha, Master Ti. These six characters form the phrase Duke Yi's Broth and Master Lu's Ti. Inside, a support is placed, the top of which is crenellated with three quadrangular projections delimiting three spaces. The first protrusion bears the motif of a pheasant, an animal symbolizing fire, and the figure of the trigram Li. The second has the motif of a tiger, a wild animal corresponding to the wind and the figure of the trigram Shun. The third is adorned with a fish, an aquatic creature and the trigram Kan. Shun, 
governs wind, li fire, and kan water. Wind stirs up fire, and fire heats up water. This is why these three trigrams are represented on this brazier. The brazier is also adorned with garlands of flowers, falling vines, winding streams or geometric motifs. Some are made of wrought iron, others of turned clay. The ashtray is made of an iron tray with three feet, which supports the brazier. Okay, so the, the brazier is um, in the Tang Dynasty is the ancestor of, uh, uh, of what uh, has this function uh, later on during the um, uh, Qing Dynasty. Uh, to it's, a it's the equipment that uh, is, has a function to make uh, fire in order to warm the, and boil the water. Uh, so it has, um, it's described uh, being made of copper or cast iron instead of clay. Uh, that's why uh, in, uh, in the Qin dynasty we call it Ni Lu, here they call it Fong Lu. Uh, Fong refers to the wind, Ni refers to the clay. This is made of clay. At that time it was made of iron. Sometimes it's also actually called Ni Fong Lu uh, instead of uh, just Ni Lu. So really this shows that the um, uh, wind, the air part, is very important uh, because without the air, no fire, and uh, without the fire, it's not possible to, to boil the, the water. Uh, another important part is the fact that there should be three feet, not four or five, just three, and this is a reference to the tripods of antiquity uh, during the Copper Age, uh, already there were very beautiful um, tripods that had uh, ritual uh, functions. Uh, we can also still uh, see uh, these, uh, they are call also called ding, and uh, these uh, cauldrons with three feet. We can still find them in most uh, temples in Taiwan and in China. That's where the incense, incense sticks are, are placed. Uh, after uh, doing worship uh, in the in the temples, so these three feet really want to um, uh, symbolize this continuity between the older times where these uh, um, elements, uh, accessories were very intricate, very beautiful, very well made with bronze and a lot of uh, decorations. And we see that um, this brazier has also lots of decoration with lots of meaning. Even some um, uh, almost magical meaning, uh, these uh, uh, bagua, these uh, characters with uh, bagua, that's uh, on these uh, symbols that are either one long uh, line or two small uh, broken lines. Uh, and with the combination of uh, this a long line or, s or two small lines, two broken lines, um, the each uh, trigram represents a certain uh, thing. So here the s three symbols that uh, are needed of, uh, from the Bagua uh, system of symbols are Kan for water, Shun for wind, and Li for fire. And these again are represented by animals, the pheasant for the fire, the tiger for the wind, and the fish of course for, for the water. So this um, gives um, a lot of hidden meanings, uh, keys, uh, and uh, almost like um, uh, a way to uh, uh, to call for these three symbols to appear and uh, help make the fire and help then make the water boil so that we can make good tea. And this tea, we can see uh, in the scripture, is also 
has um, the goal to make our five elements in our body balanced and 100 diseases eliminated. Uh, remember in the introduction to this book, for Louis, he mentioned all the medicinal uh, aspects of tea that uh, if brewed well, uh, or if well made, uh, it's not brewed, it's more boiled, if uh, uh, well made tea can uh, relieve lots of diseases, but if not well made, actually it can uh, make your condition worse. So uh, here, to make it well, we call on uh, all three elements, wind, fire and water. And um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. We continue with the second uh, utensil that is mentioned, the basket, ju. The basket is made of woven bamboo. It is one foot two inches high and seven inches in diameter. It is also woven from rattan on a wooden frame in the shape of a grain basket. The weave forms hexagonal holes. On the bottom and lid, the protruding ends of the strands are removed. Now here the basket uh, is not clear what its function is. Actually, uh, it comes. It's a, uh, necessary with the brazier. What do we need with the brazier to make fire? Of course, is charcoal, and this charcoal uh, is put in this uh, basket. Number three, the charcoal club, tanjwa. The coal sledgehammer uh, made of iron has six edges. It is one foot long, its tip is pointed and its body bulges in the middle. The slender handle has an ornamental ring. It is similar to the maces used today by Heulong soldiers. Some make it in the shape of a hammer or an axe as the case may be. So the charcoal club or uh, little sledgehammer is a tool to cut your charcoal uh, small enough so that it's easier to light it. So especially in the beginning of the fire you need uh, very small pieces of, of charcoal and also you want to uh, make your charcoal um, in the right uh, size for the strength of fire that uh, that you want. So uh, for this, to, to make your charcoal uh, in the right uh, thickness and longness, uh, you need this little tool to, um, to cut it into smaller pieces. This we can still find nowadays in the uh, Japanese way of tea. Uh, great attention is placed on the size of the, of the charcoal uh, and we can see it already it took its uh, origin in the, in the Tang dynasty. Number four, fire tongs, Hojia. Fire tongs are also known as Ju chopsticks. Similar to those commonly used, they are cylindrical sticks, one foot three inches long. The end is flattened. It's neither round like spring onions nor curved like the hook of a lock. They are made of iron or hammered copper. So these fired uh, tongs uh, are the uh, used like chopsticks and they are used to place the charcoal on the brazier while the fire is still going uh, because uh, you need to add some uh, charcoal from time to time if you, so that the fire uh, does not die down, especially if you want to make uh, several times uh, tea. So in order not to burn your fingers and not to um, make them dirty, you use these uh, fire tongs. Uh, next, uh, the pot, fu. Mm. The pot is made of cast iron. Today, some foundry obtain what is known as remelted iron from used farming uh, material. The inner mold is made of earth and the outer mold of sand. 
the earth gives the pot a smooth inner wall that's easy to clean by rubbing, while the sand roughens the outer wall, making it easier to withstand the heat of the flame. The ears are square shaped to, key, to help keep the pot in balance. The opening is wide to allow, to allow vapors to spread far and wide. The belly is high enough to keep the boiling in the center. If the belly is elongated, boiling is concentrated in the center, so that the tea powder is better stirred, resulting in pure flavor. In Hongzhou, the pot is made of stoneware. In Laizhou, it is made of stone. Stoneware and stone kettles or pots are elegant, but lack, but lack sturdiness and solidity, so are not used for long. Those made of silver are of great purity, but they display an excess of sumptuousness. Elegance is appreciated, but so is purity. In fact, for long-term use, we end up going back to iron. So here it's uh, quite interesting to uh, have uh, that the pot in which um, tea is prepared, is uh, boiled, is made of uh, cast iron with two different types of um, uh, uh, surface. The inner surface, which is in contact with the water and the tea, must be very smooth so that it's easier to clean. So on the outside, is, the mold is made with uh, uh, earth, while the outside wall must be more flame resistant, heat resistant, and for, the, for this, a rougher surface is better. And we can see this also on uh, our Japanese tetsubin. The outside surface definitely is always very rough. Huh? And um, so this roughness is not uh, a lack of um, uh, finesse or elegance. Actually, it has a function already uh, seen by um, uh, Lu Yu to make it more flame resistant. So uh, this uh, outside uh, roughness of uh, cast iron, which are those uh, utensils nowadays that are on uh, contact with uh, the flame, uh, is uh, explained already in uh, Louis charging. Mm. And of course, he's also mentioning uh, um, silver. For him, he feels it's a bit too sumptuous. We saw that uh, there is a um, uh, silver tea set from the Tang Dynasty that was found in the Farman Temple in 1987. Uh, but most drinkers and uh, Du Yu uh, was uh, an orphan uh, who grew up in a monastery. And, uh, he did not belong really to the wealthy uh, society. They cannot afford uh, beautiful silverware for making tea. So that's why to f f probably he writes that it's uh, still okay to go back to iron and he gives um, even a trick to make a cost down is to use, to reuse, to remelt farm uh, equipment, farm accessories uh, into uh, such um, uh, pots. So these, these pots, uh, they are quite deep and he describes them quite deep and these are, are what, uh, these are placed over this brazier. Um, the cross braced stand, Jiao Chuang, its legs are cross braced and its seat has a void in the center to accommodate the pot. Uh, so this uh, six utensils is what uh, is, makes a junction between the brazier and uh, the pot. Tweezers, Jia. The tweezers are made of a small green bamboo. It is one foot two inches long, one inch from one end. There is a knot and the part after is a knot split in two. It is used for roasting 
Uh, um, uh, sorry. For roasting the tea cakes. This dwarf bamboo exudes its juices under the effect of the fire, mingling its pure perfume with the tea, whose flavor is thus enhanced. But this is hardly possible unless you are in the middle of a forest or valleys. We also use pure iron or hammered copper, which last longer. So here now we have uh, tweezers uh, to hold the compressed tea cake and it is before it is um, before we turn it into tea it it will be uh, put over a flame um, to roast it or to dry it a bit uh, remember in the tang we are in the tang dynasty it's very difficult to and we are in china so it's a humid environment so in order to um, it's very difficult to keep uh, tea very dry, so by compressing the leaves into a cake it's already one way to um, keep the um, uh, tea as dry as possible. However, on the outside, that's where uh, the leaves are going to pick up some uh, moisture, and so before the tea is um, uh, turned into powder, uh, the tea is first um, uh, put over uh, some fire uh, or a heat source in order to uh, decrease the moisture contained on the on the outside. Number eight, the paper bag, Jinan. The paper bag is made of two thick white sheets of paper made from Shan Rattan and sewn together. Dried tea is stored in it to preserve its aroma. So just after uh, the uh, tea cake has been uh, dried uh, over uh, the charcoal, uh, it is placed in this paper bag so that it won't catch uh, moisture again. Number nine, the millstone, Nien, and the duster, Fumo. The grinding wheel is preferably made of mandarin wood or failing that, pierre, white mulberry, paulonia, or, dry, or dye mulberry. It is curved on the inside and rectangular on the outside. Curved on the inside to allow circular movements, rectangular on the outside to control the risk of tilting. The round inner shape is perfectly matched to the outer frame. The gr grinding wheel has no spoke but an axle, nine inches long and one inch seven thick. This wheel has a diameter of three eight inches and a thickness of one inch at its center and half an inch at the edges. The axle is angular in the middle and cylindrical at the ends. A quill is used to dust the powder. So, you, we saw already in the introduction. I saw a pic I shown you a picture of this uh, Tang Dynasty um, uh, grinder. Uh, with uh, that one was uh, made of silver. Here it says it can also be made of uh, of wood, and um, says uh, that uh, mandarin wood is the best uh, wood that can be chosen. Uh, and then you grind the. Uh, the tea from the cake uh, to powder, uh, but it won't be gr grinded as uh, thoroughly as during the Tang Dynasty, uh, as uh, during the Song Dynasty, or for matcha uh, later on. Uh, this way of grinding um, leaves it a bit, uh, makes it uh, a bit larger uh, than uh, during the Song Dynasty. However, it is still. Um, uh, sieved, and we will see with this next item, the sieve, lo, and the box, he. The powder is sifted and stored in a box with a lid, in which the measure is also placed. To make the sieve, a huge bamboo is cut, bent and dressed in a fine silk gauze. The box is made from a bamboo knot or an elegant Araucania band that has been lacquered. 
It is 3 inches high with 1 inch for the lid and 2 for the body. Its opening is 4 inches in diameter. So here, then, thanks to silk, uh, we are going to be able to sieve uh, the um, powder uh, from the grinder so that the largest elements uh, won't be put into the, um, uh, into the pot. Uh, and there is a box to keep this uh, tea powder after it has been grinded so that it won't uh, catch uh, moisture you know, while waiting for to be used. Number 11. The measure. The. Made from marine shells such as oysters or clams or from iron, copper, bamboo spikes or plugs, it is used for dosing, weighing, setting a standard. For a shang of boiling water, a spoon measure, one square inch, is, is used. For lighter tea, the quantity is reduced. For a stronger tea, it is increased. This is why the spoon is also called the uh, measure. So, uh, Louis explains that um, for uh, to make uh, Tang, Tang Dynasty tea, you use a measure, really a, a spoon, uh, and you can use a, a shell, or it can be made of bamboo or, or whatever element. Um, it should be a certain size, and once you have this standard, you know that if you want to make your tea stronger, you add a little bit more, and if you want to make your tea lighter, you can make less. So this st standard does not mean that all the teas that you brew have to be the same ratio of uh, tea to water, but it helps you determine what is a standard measure and then how strong you want it, less strong or more strong. So already uh, in this time, I think, uh, uh, Louis explains quite uh, quite clearly that he's against uh, one formula of uh, uh, tea to ratio uh, standard. This standard has to be uh, appreciated by each person, maybe depending on the tea, depending on the season, depending on the mood, is it the morning or the evening. Uh, the standard gives you a guide. Uh, but it's still your appreciation if you want to make the tea light or strong. You don't have to use a standard uh, to, to always make your tea at the, the same strength. Uh, so uh, I think this is uh, also a very interesting part in this. Uh, this is half, these are half of the utensils uh, from the chapter. So I'm, coming, I'm going to close uh, today's lesson here. And in one month, or approximately, we're going to continue uh, reading from this chapter all the other utensils, one of which will be the very important tea bowl. Um, today we're using teacups, but uh, in those times in uh, Tang Dynasty, Louis, they were using tea bowls. And uh, we're going to see what is Louis' opinion on these tea bowls. This still has its importance for today. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, your interest and your uh, companionship. Mm. I've done some new um, postcards for this year thanks to your votes on uh, Facebook on my best pictures for last from last year. These are the two photos and uh, pictures that have been turned into postcards. As you can see, I will, uh, with each order, give a, a set of uh, such postcards. With your order, I start with the um, last, uh, with the earliest postcards that I still have in uh, in stock. And um, this is for those who have already received all the other postcards before. Please give me also thumbs up if you like this kind of. Uh, uh, tea classes. Uh, I want you to become the new tea masters uh, and uh, subscribe to the channels if it to the channel if it's not yet made. 
and um, see you next week for another T-Class and have a great Sunday.